Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry and today we have another episode of my board game collection, Shelf by Shelf. Today I'm going to be covering shelf number six, or at least the shelf that I have labeled shelf number six in my collection. And that would be this one right here. And the first thing we have covering the games behind is Kingsburg. And Kingsburg is one of my favorites. This is a worker placement game where your workers are dice. So it's a dice placement game. This is also a city building game, right? Where players are building their part of the city, the city of Kingsburg, which compri is comprised of different buildings. And the different buildings give you different benefits, different victory point totals, uh, different uh, perhaps resource productions or powers and benefits in all sorts of different ways and you're trying to find and choose which buildings are the best but you also have to build them in order from left to right there's several rows and each row is comprised of four columns but you cannot build buildings on the second column of a given row until you've built that building before it so the order in which you choose to build these buildings is very very crucial and you're using your worker placement throughout the game to uh you know influence different court officials different members of the royal court and get mostly for the most part resources which there are three main resources in this game you have gold you have wood and you have stone and these are the resources that help you build these buildings but you're also trying to, you know, sometimes influence someone that gives you victory points straightforward or somebody that helps your military. Perhaps the general can help you bump up your military and strengthen your military because at the end of each round, which is a calendar year, supposedly, you have a different uh, group of forces, a different race, you know, whether it's orcs or goblins, some type of race that's going to attack the city of Kingsburg at the end of each winter and you need to be ready for it by having military and if your military is strong enough not only do you gain bonus victory points for having a stronger military than your opponent but you also gain po uh, points if your military is stronger than the upcoming enemy that's attacking the city and you theoretically don't know because they're face down until they're, they're revealed at the end of each round you have a few worker placement actions or spots that allow you to peek and see the top but you want to be strong enough you have an idea of the range of strength of the enemy but you don't know quite how strong they will be so you want to be ready this game incorporates lots of things that i like i like city building i like resource management i love worker placement and i love the concept of dice rolling and dice placement right so that is kingsburg now behind kingsburg we have a few more babies from left to right first of all we have modern art the classic auction game from reiner knizia this was actually his first auction bidding game that was printed in the early 90s and reiner knizia has gone on to uh, design many many more auction bidding games but this one is just a straight up auction bidding game there's just auctioning this game and you're auctioning for different works of art and there's all these works of art are designed by one of five different artists and i think they're real life artists uh work that are used in the, the cards for this game but each round you are manipulating the uh value of these um different works of art by by getting them to be more popular. So every time you acquire um, a, a good or uh, a work of art of a particular artist, it becomes more valuable. And even when an opponent acquires one of the same artist, it makes your works more valuable because the more popular your artist is, the more valuable the works that you own from that artist are going to be, right? So it's just manipulating and managing that market. And it's also a cumulative market because from round to round, uh, artists that were popular in the past become even more and more popular as long as they remain relevant as long as they're still popular in the current round and you're managing all that and there's five different types of auctions the cards on the work of art itself dictate what type of auction you're going to participate so if you like auction bidding games if you like set collection and you would like a little bit of a you know fluctuating market you will like this game uh i like it i've grown a little bit cold on it because i do find that reiner kennedy himself has made better uh, auction bidding games in subsequent designs of his throughout his illustrious career but it's still a good game and i'm not getting rid of it, rid of it from my collection then we have cosmic encounter everybody knows it's one of my favorite games amazing negotiating political game uh with potential conquest and lots of you know deal making and um you know just bartering and 
working together collaboratively, make, forming alliances throughout the game. Players are trying to establish five foreign colonies outside of their planetary system, but at the same time defend their planetary system from being overcome because every different player has their own unique alien race. And that alien race gives them cheats or ways of breaking the standard rules of the game. It makes them unique. It makes the game very asymmetric. And there are tons of aliens just in the base game. And there are six expansions for this game. This is a fun game. Lots of, you know, laugh out loud moments. Lots of um, very exciting, epic moments. Very rarely does this game play out in a way that's not memorable that doesn't give a story to tell or just something that you you know cling on to or, or hold on to uh for future plays really cool gives the opportunity for people to be vicious and betray each other but also for teamwork because at, at the end of the game there only has to be one loser theoretically and there can be multiple winners so that is always cool to see how it unfolds so that is cosmic encounter right after cosmic encounter we have dice hospital and dice hospital is a Worker placement game, another worker placement game um, with dice. The dice are not your workers. The dice are actually your patients. You're, each player is running their own um, hospital, and you're basically in the role of an administrator, so to speak. You are manipulating your workers who represent a different medical um, personnel. You have doctors, and you have uh, nurses. You have different specialists within the different medical disciplines, and you're manipulating those, and you also have your... Um, your hospital board, which is comprised of different units, right? You have your wards to keep your patients uh, sitting comfortably while they wait to be treated. You have your different units, which is where they actually will be treated. You're making upgrades as the game goes on, like hiring different staff, different personnel. You are um, adding more units, more advanced units to your hospital board so that you could treat uh, players more efficiently and the dice are color coded you have three types three colors three types of patients basically green red and yellow and the different units and the different specialists correspond to these different uh dice so based on i guess your census your the demographic of your census the patients that are actually in your hospital will determine what types of specialists and units you want to focus on. So if you want to look at it from a thematic perspective, I guess that's how it will work. What's interesting about this game is, or maybe a detractor from this game, is that it's kind of multiplayer solitaire. People say that quite often about worker placement because the only thing you can most often do in worker placement games to affect your opponent is block a space. Well, in this game, you can't even do that because your worker placement spots are determined by your own personal player board, right? So no opponent can stop it. And basically, the worker placement phase of each round can basically be played simultaneously because, again, there's nothing your opponents can do to stop you. So it's basically just choosing the right sequence in which you want to choose these different worker placement spots because the order in which you choose them does affect... Uh, how efficient and effective you could be on a given round because what you're trying to do is you're trying to treat patients at a pace where you can rapidly discharge them from your hospital and score points based on you know the incremental amount of patients you discharge from round to round also your hospital only has given said space so you do want to keep on discharging patients so that you could admit more patients in future rounds so finding that balance is what uh, is key to winning this game. The only way that players really interact with each other is in the drafting of the patients, which is something that happens at the very beginning of the round, and then the drafting of the different upgrades, the staff members and the units for your hospital. Those are the only two points where players can interact with each other, and basically it's limited to, I can take something before you can. Maybe I could take something that's not quite as helpful to me, but I know would be very helpful to you, so I'll keep it out of your hands. That is pretty much it, but it is a fun game, and and for me, myself, having worked in the healthcare industry for five years, and my wife, who still works in healthcare, it's a very relevant game to us, thematically speaking. And then the next game we have in the row here is Robo Rally, classic uh, programming game designed by Richard Garfield. This game was designed in the early 90s. He actually worked on it in the 80s, from what I hear, but it was finally published in the 90s. This is a fun little game. Every player controls a different robot, and you're... Basically, it's a race. You have a bunch of checkpoints that you have to cross off, though. Um, depending on the size of your race, you could have you could have one checkpoint, but you could have 
all the way up to six checkpoints. You also make different customized maps, right? Race tracks, basically. And these all represent the factory. And they have different things, different obstacles. Um, you have conveyor belts. You have lasers you have to watch out for. You have pits you can fall into. All these different hazards that you have to look out for. Of course, you also have to account for your opponents and the decisions they're going to make. But the programming is simultaneous. And then the execution is is turn based right whoever's whoever has first in the turn order executes their um programming first but after you've revealed these program cards and you see where your opponents end up on the board you realize that things might not work out for you the way you thought they would you might get end up getting pushed out of a place not starting from the same place you had intended or even the fact that there's a real-time element to the programming phase or a timed element there's a timer and the rushed experience of trying to think as fast as possible, you might end up realizing that you played the wrong cards to begin with. It's not the kind of game to take too seriously, but it's a cool analytical game as far as anticipation, speculation, just having that instinct to know what might happen, what your opponents might choose, and try to be uh, the most efficient person in your programming so that you could be the person that makes it from checkpoint to checkpoint uh, the fastest and ultimately wins the race. So that's Robo Rally. And finally, the last game here on this uh, shelf right here is Sushi Roll. And this is the dice version or the dice spinoff of the very massively popular Sushi Go, the pick and pass card drafting game. And I'm going to say that I like this better than Sushi Go. Sushi Go is okay. I like Sushi Go, especially the Sushi Go Party, which adds lots of content, lots of variety, which is very important to me. Um, but Sushi Roll is even better. It does take away from the simultaneous play. There is no simultaneous play in this one. There is turn order, but that's fine with me. I like the dice drafting system. I love the fact that these dice have infinite possibilities because from turn to turn, you're still re-rolling them. So they're not just limited to whatever the first roll is. I love the fact that there's lots of ways of mitigating luck. There's lots of different tokens that you can earn that grant you re-rolls or other ways that just make up for the fact that it feels a little bit luck-based because it's dice. Um, and it's really, really cool. Plays really quickly. Plays really smoothly. The tactile experience of rolling the dice is cool. The neat idea of placing these dice on the conveyor belts as you acquire them is neat. There's just a lot of nice, cool little things going in this game. And again, for whatever reason, I personally prefer it to Sushi Go. And that's it, folks. That's all for my shelf number six. Quite a shelf. Thank you so much for joining us here at When Harry Met Board Games. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about shelf number six. Which game stands out the most? Which game is your favorite on this shelf? Perhaps you haven't played any of them. I'm interested to read to see what you guys have to say. Well, this is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.